This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And this week, as he also moonlights as an expert of vampire lore, he's taking a look at the weapons of Redfall. So a whole class of weapons that are stake launchers. I approve of that in principle. Uh, for, for a vampire game, that makes a lot of sense. In reality, if you were trying to launch stakes, I suspect a 12 gauge shotgun would probably be the best platform to start with. But hey, I'm not a vampire hunter. Make sure to subscribe and let us know what other games or guns you'd like to see Jonathan break down in the comments section below. Right, let's take a look at the guns of Redfall. Right, this is a bit of a mystery. So I was initially presented with something that looked plausibly like a you know factory produced 20th century handgun of some kind, but doesn't really match anything that, that I can think of. Um, there's a Chinese pistol, uh, QSZ-92, I think it is, that is close, except for the, the well, except for all details, um, and the protruding barrel at the front. That's relatively unusual. The only reason to have a, a barrel protruding that far from a, a slide, conventional length slide, obviously you have the P38 famously with exposed barrel, but it, that's because it has a short slide. You wouldn't normally have barrel protruding out beyond a, a full length slide. There's no reason for it. A short extended barrel threaded for a suppressor would be the, the only real reason to do that. So that's a, a slightly curious design feature. Overall, the design is plausible, and I think has been referenced from real life firearms just based on how sort of plausible it does look. Already a curious design, but fair enough. You design your own guns for your fictional reality, that's fine. But then we've got the same gun, still under the name Centipede, but it's not the same gun. It has a different, different slide, different frame, different trigger with a big exposed coil spring behind it that almost implies some sort of craft produced design, as does the shape of the slide as well. And then a very strange muzzle device that looks a bit like a machine gun booster, kind of, with, with holes in it. I'm not sure what that's supposed to do, but I'm not sure it would do very much in real life. Very strange kind of suppressor height sights that look like they were made in a shed. If I'm reading this correctly is that we've got the original centipede that was made in a factory and someone has made their own version of it. Or having said all of that, the the frame looks more like a beat up factory made frame, just of a different design. So I, this is pretty bewildering right out the gate just with the pistol from this game. So we'll move on. So, pretty, well, I say straightforward shotgun, not necessarily. There's a lever loop under the action and a top brake lever as well, which is sitting very proud of the stock. Slightly curious design there, but on the face of it, it's a side-by-side -side brake action shotgun. I just wanted to comment on the stake. So clearly we have to use stakes to kill vampires. This has been attached offset with some sort of clamps. Looks a little bit like leverage on that would be a problem. Um, the stake looks quite thin and breakable. It's very, very pointy, which I guess it would have to be to do the job. But I don't know how many stakings you'd get before the point would become blunt uh, from impact or snap off. But here we need a pointer stick. And so it's OK, fair enough. It's on the um, on the shotgun, giving you a bit more length as well, because this is a very short gun. And like a spear, like a pike, like a rifle with a bayonet, you need some reach to be able to, especially if this thing is a supernatural beast with talons, you want to keep them at a distance. So I'm, I'm happy enough with the with the overall design as an anti-vampire weapon. I do moonlight as um, uh, a vampire and zombie specialist <laughs> when it comes to arms and armor for my sins. Now, uh, I don't have it here today because it's on display for the public, but I did acquire for us some years ago a vampire killing kit. And I do the air quotes because I'm at pains to point out that these things were not conceived and made as far as we know in the 19th century. These are probably invented in the 1970s, could be f as far back as the early 20th century, but there's no real evidence for that. They're, I still think they're very cool. And um, I was persuaded actually to acquire a, a real one. So we have a real vampire killing kit and it's very popular and it's an important piece of popular culture. Our vampire killing kit 
The stakes are too short because it's a nice portable box and a nice thing to, to look at and, and have. Here we have something that's ostensibly for actually staking a vampire in the heart. Now the actual staking in the game, it seems like it, a lot of the work's done for you. It would have been cool to have to have a bit of precision over hitting the heart. Traditionally, you stake the heart to kill a vampire, but it does seem like it's essentially the same as Call of Duty bayonet. Press the button, kills the thing. So, something I do appreciate is attention to, to lore, uh, L-O-R-E, of course, with vampire stuff being something of a, an aficionado of these, of these things myself, uh, folklore and fiction. So, wooden stakes, obviously, and then fire damage. So it's not uncommon for vampires in games to be especially vulnerable to, to fire, damage from fire. Um, and that's somewhat traditional in, in the fiction. And in the folklore, interestingly enough, it was kind of the ultimate disposal method for bodies su suspected of being vampires or revenants. If they tried everything else, they would eventually um, try to burn the corpse to nothing because the corpse is nothing, the corpse can't harm you. So this, this all stems back to, or comes back to, I won't say reality, but <laughs> what people believed was, was reality. So uh, what's the best way to deliver fire damage well maybe not the best way but the best convenient way in a sort of vaguely real world scenario a flare pistol and so we have two flare pistols standard looking single barrel thing it looks quite chunky and metallic like it might be a, a military style one the double barrel flare gun though is a bit more interesting that is the flieger pistola l model <laughs> and it's not bang on to the game model but it's clearly where the inspiration came from. And it has the lever in front of the trigger guard to lever open the double barrels, insert your cartridges. There's a shotgun style extractor there. And we've also got the selector lever on the back that's represented on the model here as well. Because we're not only opening the gun with this lever, that's why it has so much effort behind it. We are also cocking the gun. That puts it automatically on safe as well. Good idea. And you can see we have two pins protruding on the back here to indicate both strikers are cocked. That means in the middle position, both fire, and I can then select, they're labeled L and R, which is um, amusing in a way. So left, only fires the left, and so on. Quite, quite a cool historical firearm, if not a weapon per se. Got a, a revolver here in a couple of different configurations. It's generically sort of Smith and Wesson Taurus. I have a short barrel Taurus here that's somewhat akin, not exactly spot on by any means. I don't, again, like the other weapons in the game, I don't think it's a direct base off anything else. There are, there are design features from different guns on it. One set of grips on it though was very reminiscent of the Ruger series with that inset panel. So uh, black grips with an, an inset colored panel. So that's possibly where that design cue has come from. The way the, the rear sights set into the, the frame on the top is quite distinctive. Generically it's a, it's a push latch Smith & Wesson style system. In this case it's a, a, a Taurus. So a whole class of weapons that are stake launchers. I approve of that in principle uh, for, for a vampire game. That makes a lot of sense. It gives you some artistic license as well to move away from the, the sort of firearm thing. In reality, if you were trying to launch stakes, I suspect a 12 gauge shotgun would probably be the best platform to start with. But hey, I'm not a vampire hunter. I don't know why these have rotating barrels. This this thing's hugely bulky anyway, so you're not saving anything by rotating each shot into alignment with whatever's being used to propel it, like you like you are in a revolver, where you're having to align the, the cartridge with the barrel each time. Lots of reasons to have rotating barrels. I don't think these things have them. You might have a rotating striker to fire, if, if indeed it's using cartridges to propel the, the stakes, which it doesn't look like it is. I'm gonna try and figure out what's propelling the stakes. There are some massive springs on show, so I suspect that might be it. Uh, we've also got breech loading, which is interesting. I'm not sure, you're, again, that you're achieving much by loading the barrel slash rail thing 
from the back. You could just as easily shove them in the front, I would think, like a spear gun, which I guess would be the other way to try to kill a vampire with a length of wood. I do like the sort of improvised sharpened lengths of wood that are being used. Propelling these things into a brick wall is problematic to say the least. Wood doesn't have much mass and is not very hard, so you need a heck of a lot of force to push it through something dense like brick. Blood suckers are gone. So ultraviolet, so that this is um other than sunlight, spoiler alert. Nosferatu gets evaporated by the sun at the end of that the 1922 film, uh, which is pretty much where sunlight as a, as a weapon is, well, it is where it's first introduced. And that was extrapolated into ultraviolet weapons in, well, certainly by the early 2000s. So it's normally just a lamp, UV lamp, just like you, you could rig one up now and it would work. And I, I like that about the UV weapon is it's harnessing the power of this supposedly ancient means of uh, annoying vampires with simple technology and it's just a beam of light. This is a little bit of a halfway house so it's essentially a beam of light and it, it freezes them, it, it well petrifies them solid, uh, almost it's more like an ice weapon in video game terms in that respect and then you can destroy them by shooting them, sort of shortcutting the whole staking or fire thing. So indirectly the UV has killed them but not directly. Riffing on the whole vampire thing and, and how, how weapons might be able to kill them in a, in a somewhat different way. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. The weapon itself seems a bit like overkill. Um, it it's, looks like a purpose designed weapon rather than just a UV lamp, but it doesn't have, you know, it's not like the weaponized UV in some of the, the movies where it's actually burning enough to just kill them where they stand. It's uh, turning them to stone, essentially. Okay, we have a bit of a visual gag here. Uh, the weapon is called a Grave Mistake. I'm assuming this is some sort of prestige version of another weapon that I haven't seen yet. And it is, looks like an M14 buried under, buried, <laughs> sorry, pun not intended, under a load of bones. There's a skull on the end with the flash hider sticking out of its eye socket. And there's a femur protruding from the mouth, which is clearly meant to operate as a stake. But why would bone stake a vampire? And then some other, it's, it's almost, it's a bit existence with its um, sort of body horror. Oh, and some random ropes. I guess you'd need the ropes to hold the bones on. Mm, bit of a strange one, but quite metal, so we'll allow it. All right, the FAMAS. As, as well as the slightly gaudy color scheme stickers on this thing, you'll probably notice the magazine is curved. So that would tend to indicate the G2 variant. On this one, we have the original 25 round straight French magazine, which is more typical or, or is typical of the F1 variant of the mass. But we do have some quite a lot of features there that are correct. The general shape, the iconic carry handle with the charging handle inside. In fact, a fair bit of detail. The more I look at it, the more detail I see. The bipod legs you saw me fold up, the ribbed barrel for this adjustable grenade launcher, allowing for different distances depending on where it's set. That's what that does, in case you've ever wondered. This has been fairly closely based, given the somewhat cartoony art style of the game, on a real FAMAS. But there are a number of departure points um, I won't labour. Now, it says here, Bullpup Automatic Assault Rifle. It's okay, Bullpup, we know what that means. Broadly speaking, working parts behind the grip. Automatic Assault Rifle is a redundant term. The term Assault Rifle, questionably useful though it is, implies automatic fire capability by default. So uh, calling an automatic assault rifle is pointless. All right, so it appears that the FAMAS bayonet is capable of killing vampires, which makes no sense at all. Mechanically, like game game play wise, uh, it's clearly because they want it to look like a FAMAS bayonet or just a military rifle bayonet, but to still have the effect of the stake. But much like the leg, the sharpened leg bone wouldn't kill a vampire, I neither would a bayonet otherwise what's the point in having wooden stakes a bayonet is better in every way than a wooden stake literally the only reason to use a wooden stake is the folklore idea that the wood is somehow critical to the wounding mechanism <laughs> so it, it kind of undermine the, their own premise here by allowing even if it's only cosmetic on one level 
a bayonet blade to act just like a wooden stake. I, I'm, I'm not wild about that. Uh, the dreaded arm saw striker or protector or whatever it is. We've shown it before on the series. Actually quite a close representation underneath all of these bits and bobs and jaw bones and whatever is, is on there. Um, I've seen the base model and it's it's quite close to the real thing. The loading as well, um, insert round, wind, insert round. That's basically how it works as well. And they're showing the ejector rod being used as well. So maybe a bit more attention to the reality of this weapon than some of the others, if I can say that. But then of course we've covered it full of weird metal strips and bones and weld and it certainly looks interesting. I'm not sure what all of that gives you. Thanks for watching everyone. Those were the guns of Redfall. As always, if you'd like to check out what we do here at the Royal Armouries Museum, you can come and visit one of our three sites or head over to our website, our social media platforms, and especially our own YouTube channel where you'll see me talking more nonsense about guns. Um, in any case, we'll see you again next time.